Hello everyone. In today's video, we will learn how to compute Jensen's alpha in Excel. In the first part of the video, we will use the regression tool of Excel to estimate the Jensen's alpha. And in the second part of the video, I will show you how to illustrate Jensen's alpha using a plot of the security market line. If you need more information about the Jensen's alpha formula or an online calculator, please check the video description as we have a detailed post on that on our website. And also check the video description for a link to this Excel template that we will be using in this tutorial. Okay, let's get started. So first we need to understand the data we need. So in this particular example, I will be using monthly data for five years. So in total, as you can see, I will have 60 observations. In fact, this goes down to 62, but of course I'm using the first two rows here. So we have 60 return observations in total. Then you just need to select a particular stock or a fund or a portfolio. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be focus on, focusing on the Amazon stock, right? So I'm, I'm going to estimate the Janssen Alpha for this particular stock. What else you need? You need a market index. So I'm going to use S&P 500, as Amazon is, of course, listed in the US. And you also need a proxy for the risk-free rate. So for that, I'm going to use uh, Treasury bills. Okay. All of this data comes from Yahoo Finance. We have a separate video on uh, downloading stock returns or stock price data from Yahoo Finance as part of our um, tutorial on analyzing stock returns. So you can check that as well. So to calculate, to compute Jensen's alpha, the first thing we need to do is to compute what we call excess returns, okay? Because that's what we are gonna be using for our regression. So we need the excess returns on the Amazon and we are gonna regress them on the excess returns on S&P 500. So how am I gonna compute that? Very easy, for each month, take the monthly return for the stock and subtract the risk-free rate, all right? So that's gonna be my uh, excess return for October. Then I'm just gonna, of course, extend this until the very end. So I've got my monthly excess returns. I'm going to do the same for the market. Just need to make sure I'm using the right cells. So again, for the market, I'm gonna subtract the treasury bill return from the market return, which gives me excess returns for the market. And again, I extend it downwards. So now I've got my excess returns for both the stock and the market. And this is all the data you need uh, to run your regression. So the next thing you need to do is to go to the data tab and click on data analysis. By the way, if you've never used data analysis in Excel before, you have to add this in, okay? So there's a um, basically a data analysis tool pack, which is an Excel add-in, which you will need to run the regression. So we click on data analysis, and this, that will bring a pop-up menu. So there are many useful tools here, and the one that I'm gonna be using today is called regression. Okay. So you need to specify your Y variable, which is, of course, the stock returns, excess stock returns, because I want to find the Janssen Alpha for Amazon, right? And your X variable is your market returns. Here we are. And the only other thing you will need is to specify an output range. So I'm going to specify it slightly down here because I'm going to use the space above later on, and then just click OK. And this is the regression output that will be provided. And how, how are you going to find the Janssen Alpha estimate here? Basically, the estimate you are looking for is the intercept coefficient. So let's just highlight it in red. So this is the Janssen Alpha for Amazon, which is a bit, of course, tricky to interpret. So let's make it a bit nicer. Let's format it. So I'm going to Put it here, and I'm going to format it as percentages. So this is basically 0.23% per month 
Okay, so the Janssen's alpha estimate for Amazon is 0.23% per month. Of course, you can multiply it by 12 to get an annualized figure. If you did that, the annualized Janssen's alpha would be to about 2.8%. So I'm just gonna format that nicely as well. So you can see it here. So 0.2% per month or 2.8% per year. Now you need to be careful here because nice thing about this regression output is that we can test for the statistical significance of the Janssen's alpha coefficient. And in this case, we find that actually it is not statistically significant. So how do I make that conclusion? You can either look at the t-start or the p-value. Okay, so the t-start is too low. And of course, as a result, the p-value is too high. So to talk about meaningful statistical significance, typically you are looking for p-values less than 0.1. Okay, if it, is, if it was less than 0.1, then we could say it was statistically significant at 10%. If it was less than 0 0.05, we, we would be saying that it's statistically significant at 5% and so on. And of course, if this was around 0 0.1, uh, the T value would be much higher, around 1.64. So ultimately, this means that we can't confidently say that this intercept, intercept estimate is different than zero. So this means that we can't reject the null hypothesis that the Amazon's uh, shares over this period yielded a positive or uh, yielded a, a zero alpha. So basically, statistically, it was zero. So we can't reject that null hypothesis. Okay. If, as I said, the p-value was low, less than 0.1, or if the t-stat was point, uh, large than 1.6, we could start uh, talking about statistical significance. Okay, so the next thing I would like to do is to, you know, visually demonstrate this uh, Janssen's alpha for Amazon shares. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to compute some average returns because I, I would like to ultimately um, plot the security market line. Okay, so security market line is a depiction of the CAPM equation, essentially. So I'm going to put here alpha, beta, okay. So first of all, let's begin with the average return of Amazon, because this will be on the plot. So average monthly return for Amazon over this period was 1.27%. Then I could compute the same for the market and for the treasury bill. So as you can see, the market return was a bit lower and the treasury bill return was much lower as well. And these are monthly returns, okay? Now, um, we can talk about alphas by definition, S&P 500 and uh, treasury bill with, will both have an alpha of zero, okay? Assuming that, so basically when you plot the SML, they are correctly priced, so the alpha is zero. And for Amazon, we already computed the, uh, um, Janssen Alpha, but I'm going to do a small trick here. So I'm going to run this intercept function, which I, if I do it correctly, it should give me the same result as before. Okay, so if I, because essentially this is also running a regression and reporting only the intercept of that regression. And as you can see, the figure I get, 0.23%, is exactly the same as below. So you could also take this as a shortcut compute Janssen's alpha, but the disadvantage here is that this tells you nothing about the statistical significance, right? Whereas if I have the output down here, I can comment on that as well. Betas, by definition, the market will have a beta of one, treasury bill will have a beta of zero, and this, what I, this is what I will be using for um, my uh, SML. But also, I need the beta for um, Amazon, which I can see here that is 1.17. Again, I can do a trick here. I can use the slope function, which again runs a regression and simply reports uh, the slope of the x variable, which is the market return. And of course, that, that, would, that should give me the same answer, which is the beta of Amazon, right? 1.17, as you can see the figure is identical. Okay, 
Now we have all the data we need to plot our security market line. So I'm going to go to the insert tab. And from here, I'm going to select a scatter uh, plot. Okay. So it's already picked some data, but this I don't really like this. I'll have to readjust. Oops. Yeah. So I need to select data. So let's get rid of all of these. And I'm going to first add my X values for the SML, which are my betas, because beta is on the horizontal axis. Okay. And on the vertical axis, I've got average return. Show these two figures. And that's it. Okay. So these two points will constitute the security market line. And what I can do here is I can actually um, if I go to a chart element, I can add a trend line, right? So I'm going to add this trend line, and I'm going to format that as well. Just let me do that, format trend line, because I would like to, I don't want it to stop at beta equals one. I would like to go ahead a bit further. So what this is going to do is that it will ensure, as you can see, that there is, oops, there's a forecast of another 0.5. So the SML extends from um, 0 to beta 1.5. So this point here, so this point here, let, maybe actually let me get rid of this one second. So this point here, a data label is your market return. Okay. Oops. Oh, I can't even reach you. Market return, S&P 500. And this is my, this is my risk free rate, risk free. Okay. And now let me add the trend line again. Okay. And again, I'm going to pull this over here. So I'm going to forecast also another 0.5 period. So for up to beta 1.5. Here we are. So this is my SML. So let's see where Amazon is going to be here on this plot. Now, my prediction is that it should be about the SML because it has a positive beat, a alpha, okay? So let's see that. So I'm gonna go to select data, add a new series, and I'm simply gonna add the Amazon stock as a single point here. So it has a beat of 1.7, and it has an average return of 1.27%. And here we are. So this, what we have here, is our Amazon stock. Here we are. So as you can see, the Amazon stock lies on the SML because it has a positive alpha. In fact, the alpha value, the Jensen's alpha, is simply the distance uh, between this point and the, the vertical distance between this point and the security market line. If the alpha was negative, so for example, I can just try so five, a negative value. Oh, sorry, not like that, but maybe let, let me lower the return here. So if I lower the return to, let's say, 0.7, as you can see, the alpha would um, this will become negative. It won't happen here because I haven't changed anything in the returns. But maybe let me try something else. And I'll put some very negative returns here. So let's make these negative. As you can see, this has started coming down. Let's make this minus 14%. And as you can see, the average return has dropped and the alpha has become negative and Amazon has dropped 
below the security market line. And now it has a negative Jensen's alpha. So let me reset this so we have the correct figures. And there we are. OK, so this is all I want to cover in this tutorial. I hope you have found this useful. And uh, I'm looking forward to um, seeing you again in another uh, video tutorial. Thank you very much.